Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all Midnight Club games for the Sony PS2. Midnight Club the first game started out as a mixed bag. It was fun, but it had drawbacks and was certainly not a game for everyone. You start the game as a taxi driver that gets fed up by a racer and starts racing too. And here's the hardest part of the game, getting your first car. In this game, if you want to get into a race, you have to tailgate a racer to the start line, which is the hardest part of the game because the AI is stupid and because the racer's car is way faster than your taxi. You can't keep up with the car, which means that you'll have to memorize the path the AI racer takes and follow him to the start line. And that's pretty hard. It's harder than it sounds. Then you have to repeatedly try to win your first race with your slow taxi. In this game you don't have a racetrack like in other racing games. Here you have a big map and some checkpoints on the map. You have to make your way to the checkpoints and choose the shortest route while avoiding traffic and the police. And this type of racing is not for everyone. Some prefer to be told exactly where to go instead of having the freedom to choose. I like both systems. I like Midnight Club's way of letting you choose your way to the finish line. Ok, so after you win a race, the tailgated character challenges you to a one-on-one -on -one race. And after you beat the racer, you win their car. This is the only way to collect cars in the game. This is the procedure. And after you have the cars, you can tune them yourself. You don't get the option of tuning your vehicle. You get some presets and can choose the color, but that's it. You don't get the wealth of customization options you see in future Midnight Club games. But at least the maps are big. You get two locations, New York and London, and each has landmarks. And considering the time the game was released, the locations are good looking too. But then, when you see the sequel and how polished it is, you start having second thoughts about the first Midnight Club game looking good. Midnight Club 2 is a big improvement over its predecessor. The gameplay system is the same as in the first one, meaning that you have to tailgate the racer and then race with the checkpoints and then you win the cars by pink slip. But there are new stylistic differences that make this one a better type. For example, this game has more pedestrians on the side of the road and the damage models on the vehicles are better than in the first game. Also the game introduces the option to drive on two wheels. And it's also the first game that introduces bikes. And the controls are grippier. In the first one the controls were wonkier, your car was flying all over the map more often, but here the cars feel and control way nicer. And now you have three big maps to roam in, LA, Paris and Tokyo. And cop cars look way better in this game than in the previous one, and all of the cars look better. But a bummer is that with all of these improvements, you still couldn't tune your car. It, it's the same system as in the previous one. You can choose only the color and choose from some presets, but that's it. But at least a nice feature returning from the first game is the capture the flag game mode, which is fun. And also, this game introduced the slip slip slipstream feature, which means that if you drive behind an opponent close enough, this bar fills up, and when it fills up, you can nitrous boost yourself. And another noticeable difference is the track layout. The checkpoints are way better put, so that you can see them from a distance, which means that you depend less on looking on your minimap where the checkpoints are, which means that the races are more fun. Midnight Club 2 is a big improvement over the first game. Midnight Club 3 was the first time the series got to such a level that it was a worthy rival for Need for Speed. There are debates if this game is better than Need for Speed Underground 2, but my opinion is that it's too debatable. 
both have strong points and weak points. For example, Midnight Club doesn't have the variety of race types Need for Speed has. It doesn't have drag races or drift races or street acts. It has only circuit and point-to-point -point races. But on the other hand, Need for Speed doesn't have the immense customization options Midnight Club has. Compared to what Midnight Club offers in the customization department, Need for Speed is weak. Then, if you want to take it more into debate, Need for Speed Underground 2 is more accessible. I mean, the gameplay is more suitable for a larger audience, since you have difficulty settings and can put it on easy if the game is too hard. While Midnight Club, on the other hand, is a game for the pro players. It's tough. Even the easy races can be tough. You need patience and quick reflexes in the game. Midnight Club 3 is way more challenging than Need for Speed. Another comparison between the two is that Need for Speed in the car list has only cars and foreign force and SUVs, while Midnight Club has cars, SUVs, foreign force and bikes. But let's return to reviewing only Midnight Club. This game is the first one that introduces something that would have been a big selling point from the beginning. Customization. And the customization options are plenty. And plenty is even too less to say. It even surpasses the wealth of option Need for Speed Underground 2 has. You can tune your vehicle in many different ways. And it's one of the best tuning menus I have ever seen in games. And another big improvement is that now you earn cash, with which you can buy cars, performance parts and customization parts. And this is a big improvement over the pink slip system from the previous game. And the customization system is one of the best I have seen in racing game history. And Midnight Club 3 introduces the abilities. Vehicles are split into categories. Big bulky vehicles have aggro, which lets you bulldozer through traffic. And lighter and faster vehicles have zone, which slows down time. Also, if you are searching for the game, get the remix version and not the standard version. The standard version has three maps, Detroit, Atlanta and San Diego. While the remix version has four, Detroit, Atlanta, San Diego and Tokyo. The remix version also has 24 more vehicles, 25 more songs and more races. So remember, if you're game hunting for this game, get the remix version. It has more content. I consider Midnight Club 3 a masterpiece. Its tuning system is one of the best in video games and even if the game's difficulty is not for everyone, I still consider it a masterpiece. It's amazing. If you haven't played it yet, just try it out. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.